Hello, fourth grade. I hope everybody is doing well today. We are at the end of our chapter dealing with comparing fractions, ordering fractions from least to greatest or greatest to least, and Deb did a lot of work with this. So what we're going to do, typically we do the chapter review in class, typically takes us about two days, so this video might be broken up into two different videos depending on how long it gets. Um, so I might do three pages and then wait and then do the next three pages or however the timing goes. Um, anyway, but we're going to try to finish it um, in today if we can. Um, if it gets to be too much for you guys, go ahead and split it up into two days and then you can do the rest of it tomorrow if you would, ra would rather do that. So it's up to you. We are going to use this as your assessment. Because I can't physically give you a copy of your test, we're going to go ahead and do this review. Everybody is going to get credit for it. We are on an honor system here though, so hopefully you guys are still working along with me and not just writing the answers down. Um, and then you will need to submit this, please, um, either through Remind or uh, scan an email. Okay, so here we go. Well, let's go ahead and begin in prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end, Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so we are in your textbook, page 271. Okay, and we've got plenty of space to work out problems, but there might be some of them that we might not, we might run out of room, so we may have to use a piece of scratch paper, okay? I'll use my whiteboard if I need to. Okay, for numbers 1A through 1D, tell whether the fractions are equivalent by selecting the correct symbol, okay? couple of different ways you guys can do this. Let's look at 1a. I have 4 sixths and 1 fourth. You could do this one of a few ways. I could look at 4 sixths and I could try to reduce or simplify it. And if I can reduce 4 sixteenths to 1 fourth, then they are going to be equivalent. So that's one way to do it. So I'm going to do that right next to it and see if I can reduce 4 sixteenths, and I can. Remember, when you're reducing, you are dividing top and bottom by a factor that is common to both your numerator and your denominator. Remember, factors are numbers that you multiply together to get a product. Okay, 4 is a factor of both 4 and 16. So 4 goes into itself one time, 4 goes into 16 four times. Ah, sure enough, I get 1 fourth. There's one fourth right there, so I know that this is equal. Another way you could have done that, and I'm gonna do that off to the side over here. If you don't wanna reduce, you can always ask yourself, okay, one fourth, can one fourth, can I do something to one fourth to get four over 16? So notice that it's opposite, I'm working opposite. This was division, I was making it smaller, this is one fourth. I'm trying to see if I if it can equal four sixteenths. So four times what equals sixteen? Four times four. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And sure enough, four sixteen. So we know that one a is equal. You can do it any way you want, either way you want. It doesn't matter. One b, three over five, and twelve over fifteen. I'm going to see if I can reduce 12 and 15, 12 fifteenths, and if it will reduce to 3 fifths. Okay, common factor, let's try 3. 3 goes into 12 4 times, 3 goes into 15 5 times. Oh, that's not going to work. So that's not going to be equal because this equals 4 fifths, not 3 fifths. Okay, so that is not equal. 1c, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can reduce and see if I can get 5 sixths out of that. 25 over 30. Common factor I'm going to use is 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Sure enough, it is equal. Now remember, I am going a little bit fast here, so you guys can always pause the video, okay? 
and, and if you want, you can maybe do number one and then come back and watch the video for number one to check your answers and see what you did. Um, any way you guys want to work it is fine with me, okay? Okay, six tenths and five eighths. Okay, just by looking at it, I, can, I know I can reduce this and it's not going to equal five eighths. So let's see if I can get six tenths. If I reduce that, let's see, a common factor of six and 10 is going to be two. Two goes into six three times. Two goes into 10 five times. Three fifths, well, that's not going to work. Okay, so I know it is not equal. Number two, Juan's mother gave him a recipe for trail mix. So take a minute to look at all the ingredients for the trail mix. I need to order the ingredients used in the recipe from least to greatest. Okay, I'm gonna do some abbreviations over here. I'm gonna say my cereal is three fourths. My peanuts are one fourth. My almonds are two thirds, and my raisins is one half. Okay, don't get that mixed up with the one we just did up there. Okay, looking at my denominators, I can't do anything with them to compare because my denominators are not the same. So I gotta figure out what can I do to these numbers so that I can make sure that the denominator is the same all the way across. I'm gonna try and use my trick, but I don't know if it's gonna work here. You may recall from a couple lessons ago, look at your largest denominator, which is four. Ask yourself, are the other denominators factors of four? Well, these two are four, so I can already compare those. But look at this one, three. Three is not a factor of four. In other words, three times something does not equal four. I can't use four as my new denominator here because three doesn't go into it. Two does, but three doesn't, so I can't use four. This is the case where I have to start listing multiples to try to get the least common multiple if possible. So remember, multiples you're skip counting. Uh, so I'm gonna need to find the multiples of four, the multiples of three, and the multiples of two. And I'm gonna keep going until I find a number that is common to four, three, and two. So I'm just gonna start with four, eight, 12, 16, 20. I'm gonna stop there, I may have to keep going. Three, six, nine, 12. Oh, okay, well I've got two 12s here, that's a possibility. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, bingo, there we go that is going to be the denom denominator I want to use, okay? You could have also used another denominator. There's many possibilities. Just by looking at it, I could tell that I could use 24. That would have worked too. But I want to use the least common denominator. We kind of talked about that before. When we get into adding and subtracting of fractions, it's going to help if you use the least common denominator. So I want to change. So all of these numbers have 12 as a denominator. Again, if I'm going too fast, pause the video, okay? Guys, I wanna make sure you're really understanding this content. This is really the basis for what we're gonna be doing. Okay, four times what gets me 12? Four times three. Whatever you do to the bottom, you gotta to do to the top, okay? Four times four, I get four. Three times four, eight. Two times six. Okay, so my new fractions are going to be um, nine twelfths. Oh, wait a minute, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be threes, guys. I'm so sorry. That's what happens when you try to go too fast. So this is supposed to be a three. Hopefully you guys can see that. Sorry about that. Okay, so you have nine twelfths, three twelfths, 
8 twelfths and 6 twelfths. Now I can put them in order from least to greatest. So my smallest one that I see is going to be this one right here. So that's going to be my first one. Here's my second one. Here's the third. And here's the fourth. We did this in yesterday's lesson. I don't want to list these fractions. I have to go back to the original fractions that I started with. So, yes, 3 twelfths is going to be the least amount, but I don't want to write 3 twelfths. I want to write 1 fourth. So one fourth. Oh, you know what it's saying? It's saying order the ingredients. Oh, so they don't want the fraction, guys. They want the ingredients. So it's going to be peanuts. Okay. Next looks like it's going to be raisins. And next is the almonds. And finally is the cereal. Now remember, I'm doing a lot of work here. Make sure you guys are showing me your work, okay? It's really important that when you're uh, submitting this so I can see that you are working along with me. Number three. Hang on just a second. Okay. Taylor cuts one fifth sheet of construction paper for an arts and crafts project. Write one fifth as an equivalent fraction with the denominator shown. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, you're, we kind of ran out of room here. I think I'm gonna do it on my whiteboard um, because you might need some room down here to do this one. I don't even know if we're gonna have room there. Okay. So let's go ahead, we're changing one fifth to equivalent fractions with those denominators, okay? So if I have one fifth and I want it to equal something with 10 as my denominator, then I have one fifth and I want it to equal 15 as my denominator, 25 and 40. Now I'm getting all those numbers from these denominators here. I just I just wrote mine up and down. It doesn't matter how you write it. Okay, let's see if we can get this solved. I know five times two is 10. Whatever you do to the bottom, you gotta do to the top. So two times one is two. Five times three is 15. One times three is three. Five times five is 25. Five times one is five. Five times eight is 40. One times eight is eight. Notice what I did. And I told you guys that earlier when we were doing, working in the chapter, I did this step in my head. If you're not ready to do that, that's totally cool. Not a problem. If you want to go ahead and write the steps out the way we did here, you're welcome to do that too. But I had told you guys, eventually you're going to be able to skip that step and simply do it in your head. And I bet you a lot of you are able to do that now. So I'm going to transfer those numbers onto here. So I've got 2, 3, 5, and 8. Okay. A mechanic has sockets with the sizes shown below. Write each fraction in the correct box. So I want to ask myself, is it going to be less than one half? Is it going to be equal to one half or greater than one half? And you know what? I should have gotten these out ahead of time. I didn't think about it. Let's get out our fraction strips. And I am comparing them to one half. Let me move this for a second. Okay. Okay, be patient with me. I should have gotten organized ahead of time. Um, seven eighths. So I want seven of these guys. And you guys might be able to tell seven eighths is pretty close to eight over eight. So that's pretty close to a whole. So even if you don't have the fraction strips, you've probably already guessed that it is going to be greater than one half. 
three, four, five, six, and I need one more. But obviously, it is greater than one half. So on your test, seven eighths is going to go right here. Okay. Three sixteenths. I do not have sixteenths in my fractions. So we'll come back to this one. Some of you guys maybe already are able to see whether it's greater than, less than. Okay, one fourth. One fourth looks like this. It's a little guy. So that is less than. So one fourth is going to go right here. And remember, we'll come back to this one over here. Three eighths, we can do that one. Here we go. It is less than. And I don't know. Yeah, I guess they want you to put it. I'm kind of running out of room here. Sorry. Okay. Four eighths. Oh, look at that. It's exactly. I don't know if you guys can tell. I pushed it over a little bit. Yep. It is equal to. So four eighths goes right in here. And 11 over 16, again, I don't have 16 in my fraction strips here. Okay, so let's talk about that 3 16 First of all, let's see if we can make 3 16 smaller. In other words, can I reduce or simplify? So if I've got 3 16 I'm going to divide by 3 because 3 is common. So 3, oh no, that's not going to work. Okay, let's go back. Let's look at 3 16 I can't reduce it because 3 is not a factor of 16. Okay, think of 3 out of 16 and compare it to 1 half. Remember, 1 half would be 8 over 16 because 8 is half of 16. So because this 3 is less than 8, it is going to be 3 sixteenths is going to be less than. Okay. And we can use the same mindset for this other one, 11 over 16. We just said that if in order for it to be equal to 1 half, this fraction would have to be 8 over 16 because 8 is half of 16. Well, 11 is greater than 8. So we know that 11 over 16 is going to go over here because it's greater than. Okay. And my back page here. I can already tell I'm probably going to have to do this maybe even in three videos because we're already running to almost 20 minutes here. Okay, number five. Darcy bought one half pound of cheese and three fourth pound of hamburger for a barbecue. Use the numbers to compare the amounts of cheese and hamburger Darcy bought. Okay, so I'm comparing one half and three fourths, and I want to see which is less than. I can't really compare them this way. I have to find a common denominator, even though, again, some of you might already be seeing this is one out of two, this is three out of four. Ah, I bet you anything three fourths is bigger than one half. Let's do it mathematically. I'm going to try to find a denominator that is common. I'm going to use my trick. I'm going to use four because two is a factor of four. Two times two, you got to do it top and bottom. And this one doesn't change. And indeed, three fourths is greater than. So three fourths is going to be greater than one half. Again, if you guys can do this just by looking at it, go ahead and plug that in. If you need to do it mathematically, that's okay too. Number six. Brad is practicing the piano. He spends 
one half, I mean one fourth hour practicing scales and one third hour practicing the song for his recital. For numbers 6A through 6C, select yes or no to tell whether each of the following is a true statement. Okay, 12 is a common denominator of four and three. And indeed it is because both four and three are factors of 12. So we're gonna bubble in yes. The amount of time spent practicing scales can be rewritten as three over 12. Let's see, he practiced scales for one fourth. Let's see if we can do this so that my new denominator is 12 and my new numerator is three. Four times three is 12, one times three is three, and yes, he sure can, or it, it is the same amount. It can be rewritten that way. The amount of time spent practicing for the song, for the recital, can be rewritten as six over 12. Let's see if that's true. I've got one third. I want my new fraction to look like this, six over 12, so let's see if that's gonna work. Three times four is 12. Whatever you do to the bottom, you gotta do to the top. Ah, that's four twelfths, not six twelfths. So it cannot be rewritten that way. Number seven. In the school chorus, four over 24 or four twenty-fourths of the students are fourth graders. In simplest form, what fraction of the students in the school chorus are fourth graders? So I want to reduce this. I've got reduce or simplify. It's called both things. So four over 24. In order to make it smaller, I need to find a factor that is common to four and 24. So I'm going to use four because four is a factor of four and four is a factor of 24. So divide top and bottom by four to get one sixth. So one sixth of the students are fourth graders. If you can't remember what or numbers to put to divide by, you can always go back and use our T chart. You guys remember that from a while ago? To find all the factors of a number, we use our T charts, and then you find whatever numbers are common, and you those are numbers that you can multiply by, I mean, sorry, divide by, in order to make it smaller, okay? And then this, this one, the T chart for 24 goes on and on and on. Number eight, which parts of fractions are equivalent? Mark all that apply. Remember, if it says mark all that apply, chances are there's more than one answer. Okay, let's look at eight and 12. Okay, we can either work eight twelfths to two thirds or two thirds to eight twelfths. Either way, it doesn't matter. So if I divide eight by something to get two, eight divided by four, gets me two. But it has to work on the bottom too. 12 divided by four, does that equal three? It sure does, so I'm gonna bubble that in. Again, I know I'm going fast, so pause it if you need to, okay? Don't feel like you have to rush and keep up with me. Okay, this one here, four fifths and 12 over 16. I'm gonna, because I'm going from four to 12, I need to multiply. So four times three, equals 12, yep, that works. Five times three, does that equal 16? No, it equals 15, so I'm not bubbling that in. Three fourths and four 28 Can three times something equal 20? No, it can't, so I'm done. I know I can't bubble that in. Seven tenths and 21 over 30. Can seven times something equal 21? And it can, I'm gonna write it over here because I ran out of room. Seven times three, 10 times three. Yep, that'll work. Okay, number nine. Sam worked on his science fair project for one fourth hour on Friday. 
and one half hour on Saturday. What are four common denominators for the fractions? Explain your reasoning. Okay. So in order to find, hang on just a second, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right one here. Okay. So in order to find uh, four common denominators, I'm gonna be doing some multiples. So I'm gonna start a list for four and a list for two. And remember, they want four common denominators. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Okay, I'm gonna come down here. I may have to keep going. Two, four, Okay, well, four will work here and four will work here. So that's one set of common denominators. Six, eight, okay, here's another one. Twelve, twelve will work, good. Okay, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, there we go. There's my fourth one. So my common denominators can be four, eight, 12 and 16 and there's lots more too. I just I'm stopping there. Okay. Okay, um, I, we only got through two pages guys. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there like I said. Um, I'm probably gonna break this up into two more videos. Um, so on the next video we'll pick up on page 273. So again, if you want to do this all in one day you can. If you want to spread it out over a few days, you're welcome to do that as well. I'm not going to make you guys, or I shouldn't say make you guys, you guys have until um, Monday, okay, to turn this in. So don't don't feel rushed, okay, because I know everybody is very busy and you have a lot going on. Um, the date for Monday, I don't know what it is, I don't have it off the top of my head, is the 6th, April 6th. So that's when this will be due, okay, so no rush. All right, uh, we'll pick it up on the next video. So Sacred Heart of Jesus, pray for us.